Hello, nurses. This is Kevin with NursingCamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be on atropine. And this sticky note is found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and NursingCamp.com. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so atropine. It's an anticholinergic. All right, so an anticholinergic is a... Um, is a type of medication that will uh, dry a patient up. And what they do is, is the, the mnemonic is they can't see, can't pee, uh, can't spit, and can't poop. So dries them up. Now when we hear about anticholinergics, and especially atropine, we're talking about um, patients who receive it are patients who are symptomatic bradycardia. So it's part of the ACLS algorithm, and symptomatic bradycardia is a slow rhythm, and usually less than 60. And if they are diaphoretic, cool, clammy, we give atropine. And that's acute. And that will speed up. So hence, dry up speed up and it speeds up the heart rate and that's this mechanism of action um, other reasons it's given for is um, is neuroshock and neuroshock is um, different than regular shocks where the heart rate generally will go up in shock well in neuro everything's opposite so they become bradycardic and that's because of the neuro uh, system PNS SNS and that's covered more in my neuroshock lecture. But basically what happens is, is that it's causing bradycardia. And that's neuroshock and they need treatment and the treatment of choice is atropine. Another reason it's given is enduring cholinergic crisis. Remember it's an anticholinergic. And patients who need, who need um, cholinergics would be a patient like um, myasthenia gravis. And myasthenia gravis will have a droopy eyelids, and mind MG, mind to ground. And the problem is, is that as it starts to go down, they start to lose, and it goes down to the vagus and to the heart rate, and the heart rate starts to go down. And cholinergic crisis is too much medications. So atropine is the treatment, anticholinergic, for cholinergic crisis, which is too much medication. Okay, next thing is insecticide poisoning. Now that's just interesting. So, insecticide poisoning. Um, okay, so what do we need to know about it? Okay, well, um, we're going to monitor them if they're on it. There'll be if reason why we're using it, right? If it's bradycardia, they're going to be on a a heart monitor. We'll monitor them and lead to. Okay. If it's um, a patient who is a, a pre-op patient, we're going to be monitoring their decreased secretions. And it's given for that. Decreased secretions. Especially on certain surgeries. Um, because it's going to have those anticholinergic properties to it. Which is drying them up. Some other things. Why don't we give it? Well, we don't give it for patients who have um, uh, blocks, like Mobitz 2, and um, really fast tachycardia. When a patient is really tachycardic and they've gotten atropine, we, we don't keep on giving them atropine. Um, also, we monitor for paralytic ileus and mainly because it is an anticholinergic and shunting PNS and what happens is, is that um, if it shunts uh, decrease bowel sounds and they can get ischemic it is the drug of choice for symptomatic bradycardia it's a critical med it's part of my ABCCDs 
which is part of one of the acute meds, the A meds, up on the top. Some urinary retention is also expected, so monitor for that. And check blood pressure frequently. Okay, let's go to A whales, which is a method I use to evaluate meds. Is it acute or chronic? It's acute. I mean, it's given in acute situations, usually for symptomatic bradycardia. Um, but it can be given for uh, pre-op patients to decrease secretions. Uh, it's given in acute situations for neuroshock and cholinergic crisis because the heart rate goes down and it's an anti-cholinergic. How does it work? It works anti-cholinergics. Um, when do we hold it? Well, we hold it for a moments too. Uh, real fast heart rates, um, paralytic ileus, and glaucoma. And glaucoma because of the anticholinergics, because there's pressure in the eye. And when you give an anticholinergic, um, it increases that pressure. Next thing is um, the assessment. So what do you assess? I'll assess blood, sh blood pressure. And you're going to assess um, heart rate. You're going to assess the anticholinergic sy uh, symptoms like drying up, can't see, dry eyes, can't pee, urinary retention, can't spit, dry mouth, and can't poop, constipation, paralytic ileus. Any labs associated with this? Not really. No real labs to monitor on it. Um, most likely that is. Uh, eating, does it affect eating? Well, maybe with the anticholinergics, the dry mouth, lozenges, type of stuff. That might be a, a lower, higher Maslow question. And what stands out? Well, atropine is a symptomatic, given generally for symptomatic bradycardia for decreased heart rate. And the big key here is, is that they're symptomatic. So if a patient is symptomatic and bradycardic, we give this medication. It's part of the ACLS algorithm. And in NCLEX questions, if you have givatropine and you have symptomatic bradycardia, as in all NCLEX style questions, if the medication says that you can give it, you have the order. And it's okay. Um, before electricity, before we would pace that patient. Because we're always going to give a med before we ever shock somebody. Okay, my name's Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and that about does it for atropine, uh, anticholinergic, dry up, speed up. It's a drug of choice for symptomatic bradycardia. It's an acute med. And I can be found on Nursing Camp on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. Etsy and nursingcamp.com. You can download this off of uh, Pinterest, and um, we'll see you next time. Nurse on.